I'm standing at the same location where we held the sod turning ceremony in August 2015. Four years have gone past very quickly in one of the most interesting and challenging projects that I've worked on. We've reached two million man hours since the sod turning and three and a half thousand inductions of staff working on the site over this time. This project has been a great environment for our engineers and operators to learn different skills and the project has had some very interesting challenges such as the construction of a regional council pump station and the North Island Main Trunk Railway Bridge at the northernmost end of the project. You'll hear more about some of these experiences later on in the video. Now looking forward, our focus is very much on completing the last of our network drainage and importing the last of the approximately 2 million tonnes of aggregate from five quarries in the general Waikato area. As part of building the expressway, we're required to build a new pump station for the Waikato Regional Council. Flood pumps are acquired where land drainage cannot connect to the stream network and in this case the Waikato River. To build the pump station, the first step was to install sheet piles into the ground to build a cofferdam to isolate the structure. This cofferdam enables us to construct the new pump station which sits lower than existing ground level and the water level in the drain. Once the sheet piles were installed, six metres of material inside the cofferdam had to be removed to get us to design level. A 5 tonne digger was used inside the cofferdam to assist a 30 tonne long reach digger sitting outside the cofferdam reaching inside. When we were completing our final cut, water started pouring in from the bottom of the sheets as we had struck groundwater. Within an hour the cofferdam had filled with 3 metres of water and was continuing to rise. The water was immediately pumped out and managed so the required backfill for the pump station foundation could be completed. A sump with temporary pump has been installed to keep up with the constant flow of groundwater for the duration of construction. We have since completed the pump station floor slab and are now working towards pouring the main walls shortly. Following this, all of the stainless steel pipework and mechanical and electrical components can be installed and the sheet piles removed to commission the pumps. Following the successful beam lifts over the rail corridor in September 2018, construction has continued on the North Island Main Trunk Rail Bridge. This bridge connects the project works to the existing highway at the northern end of the project. This is the last of the nine bridges to be completed on the project and open to construction traffic. The four stream bridges towards the southern end of the project have been open to construction traffic for some time, allowing access between the various project areas. Of the four local road bridges, Three are open to the public, with the last, Oreni Road, scheduled to open in July. This frees up the final section of the expressway to be constructed. The Nimta Bridge has had many challenges. One recent challenge was the removal of the bridge's temporary propping. Due to the 60 metre long beam span, temporary props, acting as a mid-span temporary pier, were introduced into the design. This provided additional support to the beams until the concrete deck construction had been completed. The props consisted of eight steel tube pier piles, one under each of the eight beams. Each prop was designed to support 160 tonnes of vertical load. This was the share of the bridge deck above. With the deck complete, we then had the job of removing the temporary props out from underneath the nearly finished bridge. The design predicted the girders and the deck would deflect or drop about 170 millimetres at the prop location when the temporary props were removed. The added challenge being that all eight beams had to be lowered very evenly. A restriction was in place that required each beam only to be lowered a maximum of 10 millimetres, more or less than the beams next to it. A bank of hydraulic jacks were used to initially jack the bridge deck off the props to allow the props to be removed. The jacks were then used to slowly and methodically lower all eight beams together until they supported their own weight. With the props gone, the total deflection averaged 160 millimetres, very close to the designed predictions. We are now at the final stages of construction, installing the bridge furniture. This being the precast barriers, medium curves, and the wire rope barriers down the centre line. The last thing to be completed will be the installation of the expansion joints, but this will occur after the final pavement surface has been laid up to and right across the bridge. In May 2019, we started the final asphalt surfacing on the Huntley section of the Waikato Expressway. And this will continue as base course is completed over the next six months. This is essentially the icing on the cake after four years of hard work on the project. We are surfacing the expressway with SMA, a stone mastic asphalt layer, 
which is a mix of agarit, bitumen, and lime that is manufactured at our Fulton Hogan Waikato Asphalt Plant in Hamilton. SMA is an asphalt with texture designed into it for increased skid resistance. We will be laying 42,000 tons of SMA to complete the Huntley project. The plant produces the SMA at a rate of 65 tons per hour, and this is then transported by a fleet of 18 dump trucks to the project site. The asphalt mix temperature is checked on arrival to ensure it is around 160 degrees before it is fed into our asphalt paver, which is laying the SMA 50 mils thick. We endeavor to keep the paver moving forward at a constant speed of three to four meters per minute, thereby ensuring we can provide the smoothest ride possible for our road users. There are a set of tampers at the back of the paver, compacting the mix as it goes through the screen. That will provide 70 to 80% of the mix's compaction. The remainder of the compaction is firstly undertaken with our 10-ton double steel drum roller, and then finished off with our 8-ton roller under static compaction. We are aiming to lay approximately 5 to 600 tons per day, which works out to roughly 1.1 laying kilometers. We have dedicated on-site quality assurance personnel who follow the asphalt paving operations, checking mat temperatures, densities achieved using a thin lift nuclear densometer gauge, and looking for any abnormalities in the mix so they can be dealt with then and there before final compaction appears. In the following days, we then verify the SMA densities by taking core samples in the mat and testing them in the lab. Finally, we undertake NASRA roughness testing which measures the smoothness of the road to ensure we are meeting the contract requirements. The SMA on the Huntley section on the Waikato Expressway will cover the entire pavement width, including the 2.7 meter wide shoulder and up to the crown of the road, with exception where the median is depressed for drainage purposes. This will allow increased protection of the underlying pavement construction from possible ingress of water which is something our roads don't like. We look forward to delivering an exceptional road for the traveling public in early 2020.